A free ride for every hotel visitor. Just tell me where to go. Is everything all right? If you don't feel up to it, I won't tell anyone. It's just a goodbye, John. It won't be difficult. I've already come to terms with my mother's passing. Hmm. So you really don't remember? To what do you refer? Funeral. Sherlock, you were distraught. At first, I thought this visit would dredge up those feelings, but you've been remarkably level. John, I think I was too young to understand. I couldn't fathom why she would leave me. Perhaps that pain is best left forgotten. On the contrary, it's why I'm visiting her grave. To remember her. you wanted to remember Sherry. Concentrate and I'm sure it will come back to you. Mycroft was adamant that we leave for London immediately after the funeral. He never told me why but I saw how unsettled he was by the long requiem. The service was sparsely attended. Though my parents were buried separately, the pastors said they're united in heaven. I didn't believe him even then. I wanted to see her one last time before the coffin was interred and say how I loved her. The chance never came. I, I feel I rather faint. You're fine, you're fine. It's over now. You remembered everything. It will get easier soon. pocket watch. It seems familiar, John. Why is it here? Rest in peace, Violet Holmes. Goodbye, Mother. This watch was a gift. My mother's initials are engraved on it. The piece is in good condition. It must have been placed here only recently. A candle in a small puddle of wax. It cannot have been lit for more than half an hour. Is this really how you want to spend this time? This is my mother's pocket watch, John. Who put it here and why? Are you not in the slightest bit interested?
A man in fashionable shoes stood near the tomb. The size of the prints suggest he is approximately five and a half feet tall. You were about to tell me the make and model of tire, but let me assure you, I do not care. Hmm. Ah, well, it was going to be very impressive. Come on then, the trail continues ahead. He mustn't be far away to leave it unattended. It's stained with oil paint. The hospital are crypts. If memory serves, they're located at the far end of the cemetery around an old tree. I hope that inspiration strikes upon visiting these beautiful vaults. At the very least, you'll enjoy the view. Yours, Mercuria. A portable easel was kept there. An artist working in a cemetery? Do you think he'd paint my portrait? It's that ridiculous artist from the hotel. Be nice, Sherry. Mr. Make Holmes, friends. did you come for another portrait? <laughs> no, no, I jest. You gave quite the performance last night. The hotel was abuzz with your name. I must say I was rather absorbed in it all. The fallibility of men. Such scandal. It was a welcome distraction. Oh, my manners. I am Werner Vogel, art enthusiast and gallery proprietor. Mr. Vogel, I was perhaps too curt when last we spoke. Speak no more of it. Travel takes it out of any man, never mind when this is your destination. Once I learned who you were, the pieces fell into place. Your mother was well liked on Cadona in her time here. I was sorry to hear of her passing. Does your gallery feature more than just portraiture? Oh, of course! We display landscapes, sculpture, modern pieces, too. I'm sure we have something that will move you. You must stop by. Only music moves me, I'm afraid. Then you have simply not found your artist yet. Someone whose work hits you in your core. You're still young. I'm sure we'll find them. How did you come to possess my mother's pocket watch? Oh, my! It is quite something to witness those powers of deduction firsthand. Yes, I... I left you her timepiece. After her death, there was an estate sale. All of Cordona's elite picking of her remains. I couldn't let such a lovely thing go to those vultures. When I learned your name, I could no longer keep the watch in good conscience. It is yours by right, and I knew you'd find it here. Thank you. I've forgotten all about it, but the moment I saw it, I knew it was hers. Amazing what the young mind forgets and the older can recall. Rather odd, loitering in a cemetery. I suspect you'll win, but I'm here for my art. There's beauty everywhere if you look, even in decay. A little darkness brings out the light. Now, a diligent observer might note that you too are loitering in a cemetery. What brings you here? Closure answers penance? Closure, I suppose. And what is closure? Mere proximity? Understanding. Acceptance. You didn't understand from afar. You had to come here to accept the truth of her death? Of course I understand. She died of consumption drowning in her own blood. Your mother? Yes. 
my mother. Hmm. I must have been misinformed. I'd heard otherwise. Otherwise than consumption? No, no. You'd know better than I. I'd heard talk of a police investigation, but Cordona is a notorious gossip. Now what does it matter? She's passed on either way. She has. Well, I shall intrude no longer. I leave you to your closure. Do stop by the gallery if your travels permit. Farewell. Are you all right, Sherry? Take as long as you need. Hmm. Whatever I need, it isn't here. We should explore Cordona. Perhaps there are archives that may shed further light. Stark do this, Stark do that. I'm not a clerk, damn it. How am I supposed to get those records now? Yes? What is it? Would you like to report a crime? No, I wouldn't. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I want to use the police archives. Wouldn't we all? I'm serious. So am I. Officer Logan locked himself inside and he's not letting anyone in. But why the archives? Won't that stall everyone's work? You bet it will. He's looking up all the thieves in Cordona over the past decade. Say one thing for Logan. He's persistent. What happened exactly? A tailoress from Scaladio has been robbed. Logan spent two whole days at the shop sketching the thief, and she still insists that it's all wrong. That shrew drove him up the wall, she did. Would you mind if I talk to this tailoress? I could get you the sketch in no time. Get off your high horse, mister. You think you're better than our sketch artist? Actually, I'm quite certain I am. Let me prove it. Well, I see no harm in it as long as it gets Logan out of there. In fact, I need to look up some records too. Here's the address. Good luck. Can I ask you a question? A solid question, sir, but I don't have the answer. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm here to sketch the thief for the police investigation. Oh, what another one. I hope you'll be more patient than the previous sketches, signore. I suggest we do it differently. You have a great many clothes here, haven't you? Why, of course, but they're not for sale. I only do tailoring and mending. No matter. I'll attempt to disguise myself as the thief, and you'll tell me if I get it right. As you wish, Signor Holmes. Can you describe the thief for me? He was all ugly and beat up looking. An utter rascal, if ever I'd seen one. He gave me a nasty look from behind his glasses and then made himself scarce. And 
that's it. Could you be more specific? It was a total villain, I told you. How much more specific do you want me to be? All right, never mind. Where can I find the clothes? They're in my workshop at the back. Uh, be careful, won't you? Those clothes are wrong. He was dressed in a very fancy beige suit. Must have stolen it from someone. No doubt about it. All right, I've got it. That is wrong. I told you it was a regular bowler. You didn't tell me it was a bowler. But I did. You ought to pay more attention, signore. Something isn't right. He did wear glasses, but not like those. His were angular and evil looking. All right, I'll try another pair. Your face is too innocent now. What do you mean, too innocent? There was something evil about his face. Like a moustache. Yes, the kind that all villains twirl as they plot their evil plans. I'd say that not all villains wear moustaches. But I get your point, Mom. Ah, it's you. I mean, it's him. It's him. Excellent. Now I can make a sketch and take it to the police. Yes, sir. please do. That rascal is still on the loose. I hope they are better at catching than sketching. Before I go, Mum, are you quite certain that you don't have any clothes to sell? Well, I suppose you can take the police uniform. An officer forgot it here years ago, and I don't have any use for it. If you want to buy clothes, visit the Outfitters. You can find them all over Codorna. I hear they even do free rentals now. Let me show you where the nearest one is. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Hello again, officer. I've spoken to the tailoress and made a sketch of the thief. It was child's play. No, really? And she didn't give you any trouble? No, no trouble at all. She was quite tolerable. Huh. Who would have thought? Hey, Logan, we've got the sketch. Come on out. Can I use the archives now? Well, they're generally not accessible to the public. But you really helped us out, so I'll just turn a blind eye. I appreciate it, officer. What did you say your name was? Holmes? Come and see me after you're done. I may have a proposition for you, Mr. Holmes. John, I just recalled that we were living here on Cordona in a manor. And there was a policeman. Really? What else do you remember? What happened to our mother? The memory was vague, a, a mere flash. I have to find our house. Absolutely. Let's do it. I'm done with the archives for now. Can I help you with anything else? As a matter of fact, you can. The thing is, our chief inspector has vanished, as if we weren't undermanned enough as it is. Wait, what do you mean, vanished? Gone missing on a case. Shady business, but that's besides the point. See that board? Pending cases are posted there for any available officers to investigate. I would take them myself, except that I've been told to work the reception desk, like some clerk. Yes, we're that short-handed. I understand your predicament, but what does any of it have to do with me? I may be available, but I'm certainly not an officer. Oh, don't worry about it. Consider yourself a temporary one-man independent police force. That's a bit of a mouthful. There's just one small, minor, basic formality. You'll need to complete our physical training course. Easy. Well, I'm not one to balk at a spot of exercise. What must I do? Ask the spirit. Sergeant Ermy will show you the ropes. Follow me. So, you're a newcomer. We must be desperate to ask untrained civilians for help. You're lucky to have a well-trained civilian with a brand new auto pistol in his arsenal. An automatic? A bit of a braggart, aren't you? Are you trying to test me already? That is why you're here, boy. I need to verify your skills before I can allow you to catch criminals. The first targets are in the next room. You know what to do with them. I'll join you in a while to see the results. Concentrate, Sherry. 
You need to hit every target to show the sergeant how we do it. Hey. Proceed to the next room. Meanwhile, I'll fill out the paperwork. Come on, Sherry. It's just like in childhood. Steady, Sherry. Steady. And... My favourite mannequins for attack. Let's strike them ninja style. Aim for where you might take advantage and don't forget the environment. I could do this all day. Please don't, Sherry. We don't... Our enemies might be stronger than us, but we rely on our wits. Shoot off their armour. Hey. Alright, let's move on, Sherry. If you stand here and use your snuff box on them, you can definitely overcome them, Sherry. It's all calculated. Look at that helmet of his. You won't be able to get the powder past it. Helpful advice, John. I would never have guessed. Good job, new boy. Well, I'm almost finished with the paperwork. Let's talk about your results. Well, I must say your results aren't as bad as I feared. Perhaps you're not completely hopeless, but true combat is quite different from shooting stationary targets. I'll handle it just as easily. Well, that's what we're going to find out. Now, we'll test you against our men. Your task is to detain them, not to kill them. So don't go shooting anyone in the eye. That goes for in the field as well. Even though you'll be working with the police department, that doesn't mean you have a license to kill. Here, take these. They are blank rounds. So, are you ready? Always ready. Then let's get cracking. Worried? Not at all. I can hit them all with one shot. Good luck, Sherry. And remember, the surroundings are your playground. I'm coming for you. May I? I couldn't miss the party. Too simple. Work this way. I'm coming for you. <sighs> Terribly sorry. <laughs> Take a rest. The snuff's ready. Hello there. <laughs> Too simple. Give him the pepper snuff. That's enough. You've proved yourself. Congratulations on the arrests. I can't believe you did so well with the close combat. I did tell you that I'm well trained. Well, do the same on the street, and you'll be well rewarded for every arrest you make. Here is your certificate. You are now an authorized crime scene consultant. Well, it's now your duty to make this city a safer place. Cordona won't ever forget it, but at the same time, it will never remember. I'll tell Stark all the necessary details about your successful certification. Congratulations. Now you're a certified crime scene consultant. Congratulations. Thank you, my friend. Now, shall we head for Stonewood Manor? Don't know. You have the whole island to investigate. It's all up to you.
Hey, Sherry, there's post here, and it seems as if the letter was delivered recently. After reading that, I am even less eager to return home than before. Let's investigate our manor. That's the micro. There she is. Our old manor. It's smaller than I remember. You were a couple of feet shorter back then, Sherry. Or maybe it's bigger on the inside. the ash all over the door. I don't recall hearing of a fire. We don't have to stay here. You can afford another night or two at the hotel. Hmm. It's stuck. Oh well, let's just head back. They probably haven't even stripped our room yet. Come on. <clears throat> Must be locked. Move aside. Let me have a go. Seems fine to me, Sherry. This barrier. Perhaps it's mental, not physical. Or perhaps the rest of us are simply constrained by reality, John. I wonder if there's a key secreted somewhere in the garden. Take a look around, Sherlock. I'm sure you'll discover something. this barn give me such an unpleasant feeling. Oh, I know. It's because Mycroft used an axe to shoo you out of here. It scarred you for life, but I enjoyed it. I did not expect these to still be here. It was enjoyable to practice using real handcuffs to make an arrest. And this must be the reason our suspect was apprehended. Wood and glass are very precious. Hey, that's Wood and Joe. He was always the best at playing criminals. An irreplaceable tool for catching a thief. Funny. Wooden Joe reminds me of the trouble we once got in with the police. Do you remember, John? Hmm, somewhat. Maybe we can recall more details. Policeman brought us both home, John. That's why he was here. I'm pretty sure he brought something else with him, too. Do you remember what it was? I bet it was our reward. No, we were not so lucky. It was a set of lockpicks that we had used to sneak into someone's house. That's why we were arrested. Did someone come out to investigate all the commotion? It was Mycroft. He smoothed things over and convinced the policeman not to press charges. The officer left and never returned. 
but we had to endure a serious talking to from my brother. Mycroft wasn't happy about the fact that we were arrested. It felt like he lectured us for hours. Did we give him something afterwards, Sherry? Oh, yes. Yes, now I remember. It was a letter. That's why we snuck into the house. Mycroft asked us to. He wasn't angry we stole, but that we got caught. Ah, oh, that's right. It must have been only a couple of months after we moved to Cordona. Ugh, the good old days. Whoa. How very odd. It appears that memory stood between me and the manor. It, it's as if my mind palace had seeped into the real world. This deserves further investigation. Perhaps there's more to discover inside. As long as there is a comfortable place to put my feet up, I'll be happy. Maybe a chaise long. Aha! In we go. Home sweet home, Sherry. I was wondering why it's so empty in here. There may be a small chance that some of our property could be found among local traders' wares. It is worth a look, wouldn't you say? Hey, this is the luggage we brought from London, isn't it? I remember how angry Mycroft was about these marks. He called it a frivolous, childish endeavor. Something did happen that day, but no one can tell us the details. How can that be? Agreed. It's rather suspicious. One of the first things I saw when entering this house as a child. It's like deja vu. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Mycroft's umbrella, the only outgoing thing in his wardrobe. Another memory incoming, Sherry. Strange. I struggle to recall anything about the day we moved in. The only detail I'm sure of is that it was raining early that morning. trip was a challenge for our mother. I tried to help her. Our mother brought a slew of belongings with her. She refused to leave a single thing in London. Mycroft had to spend the whole day dealing with it. It was always a hat on our stand, but I'm sure it did not belong to Mycroft. Do you feel it? Is it the air shimmering, or is it my imagination? Thank you. 
Your neighbors will be told that Mrs. Holmes is suffering from tuberculosis. It is common to move closer to the sea in such cases. Thank you, Dr. Richter. No, Sherlock, step away from her. Upstairs, go to your room. Lean on me, mother. Take your time. Actually, I never heard her coughing. I remember now. I feel dizzy. It's stuffy in here, isn't it? John, are you all right? I'll be okay in a minute. <clears throat> How about we uh, find our room in the meantime? Look at this. It's like traveling ten years into the past with a single step. Oddly satisfying. Coal dust from Miner's End, sandy dirt from the old city. We scoured the island top to bottom for these soil samples. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Look at this, John. Remember how desperately I wanted to learn the violin? I never had a proper opportunity. Such a shame. I always hated the rule about being silent in this place. Interesting. What's that over there? This doorknob has a cross-shaped end. Too intricate to be merely a handle. You know what? That definitely looks like a key. Let's poke around and see if we can find any secrets. The only fiction book on my table. I can still hear my mother reading it to me. So many pleasant evenings were spent here with the Encyclopedia Americana. A magnificent tool made for a spurious purpose, staring into the sky. I've definitely found a better use for it. You... I mean, for spying on people. An artifact from Palau carved out of bone and claimed to be 300 years old. My mother proved it was a fake. My very favorite plaything. It was the perfect pirate treasure. I cannot believe all my toys are still here. Hey, they were not just yours, they were half mine too. Oh, it reminds me of our neighbour. He had the same balloon in his yard, only bigger. Do you remember? Yes. We visited him several times while living here.
Need to repeat this one day, but with bullets. I'll never forget how challenging it was to obtain this simple sketch. Oh, these must be the notes of my earliest observations. We wanted to locate a particular dog we'd spotted, and we met it, didn't we? This time I was first to pick beds. This one's mine now. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Nah, doesn't fit here. Perfect match. Still has a faint odor of tobacco, one of the few things on this island that smell like home. Made of cherry wood. Father's favorite. My small archive of crime clippings. Maybe I should pick up this habit again. I knew you'd find it in no time. Wasn't that neighbor missing a finger? That does sound vaguely familiar. Wasn't his name, uh, Theodore? Theodore Gilden, perhaps? It's the perfect time to investigate. That wretch Goliath would murder us all. Mark my words.
contortionist you were not. A missing pinky, middle-aged. It's none other than Theodore Gilden. A belt from a dressing gown, curious. A kneecap reduced to splinters. Disjointed vertebrae. Difficult to say if it was a way to start or finish him off. Oh boy, Sherlock. Another death means another question. And we shall answer the question. It's far too interesting to give it up to the police. Strong pull broke this leash. Poke the elephant with this. Really, people are hopeless. blood and saliva, possibly as a result of impact. Sherlock, take a picture of the footprint. It's valuable evidence. This photograph can help us find the old article about the elephants. The front page was fascinating. It was hard to believe as a child. True. We may need it in our investigation. Stop the presses. Who is Cordona's handsome stranger? Or nosebagger spurns local life? Wait, uh, no. Foppish foreigner hides dark past. I, uh, um... Oh, you've made quite the impression already, Mr. Holmes. You care to tell your side of the story? I'm quite certain I have no idea as to what you refer, and I am further certain I have no interest in indulging your gossip. Gossip? The truth will come out. But will only be heard if told well. Scandal, daring do, romance. These are the tools of every good journalist. Nothing travels faster or lasts longer than a great story. Young man, your tale will be told with or without you. My readers demand it. You already knew my name and seem aware of my doings here in Cordona. I presume this newspaper is your little endeavor? Yasmin Sertel, editor-in-chief of the Codona Chronicle, advocate of the free press, voice of the people, scourge of the silk stocking. Charmed, I'm sure. As an advocate of the free press, I trust you'll permit me to consult your archives? There are gaps in my knowledge of Cordona. Oh, so my work does have merit. Well, I think we can strike a bargain. I shall provide you access and you let me keep writing about your exploits. So be it. Brooding bachelor builds bridges. Now that's character development. I guess I owe you my gratitude. What can I say? 
I've always enjoyed working with the homes. They whisper such interesting things. That's the article. Feeling old already. Destruction and trampled ground. Destruction and trampled ground. A coal gas tank, enough to pump up an airship. A sailor's knife useful for cutting wet and thick ropes. It's seen a lot of use. The blade is worn from grinding. Fresh signs of impact. A rough landing led to an altercation with this shed. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. <gasps> 
In a fit of rage, the elephant broke the chain and threw its victim on the ground with a fierce power. Escaping the scene, it pulled the body with it, but dropped it at the gate. At least some of this was witnessed by a third party who was hurled against the shed. The elephant can't have gone too far. I can still track it. Well, suppose you find it. Then what? Push it all the way back to the manor? May I ask for your assistance? That's a question I can answer. Great. I did a good job. May I ask you something? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. <clears throat> Look who's here. Could you help me? I have nothing to hide, sir, but I've never heard of this. Hello. Everyone's looking at us, Sheriff. You sure you know what you're doing? This elephant is quite clumsy. The elephant barged into this cart of olive oil. What if we're lucky and he slipped and fell somewhere along the way? Okay, hear me out. If an elephant falls in the forest and there's no one around to... John, no. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Strange. It was hung with care. The game has escaped us for now. We'll find a solution to the elephant problem later. <laughs>